The Qatari Emir, Sheikh Hamad bin Khalifa Al Thani, has ceded power to his son, Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad. The transition has raised uncertainties about possible changes in the foreign policy agenda of the Arab state, which was already knee deep in Syria's unrest and troubled by quarrels within the ruling family. <laughs> Qatari Amir Sheikh Hamad bin Khalifa Al Thani has handed over power to his son, Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad. Today I address you to announce that I hand over power to Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani with full confidence that he is qualified for the responsibility. The 33 year old Sheikh Tamim is the ruler's fourth son, has been groomed for the position since 2003 when his elder brother stepped aside. He was trained at Britain's Royal Military Academy Sandhurst and is currently the deputy commander of Qatari Armed Forces. Power transition in Qatar has never involved the participation of people. The tiny oil rich Persian Gulf state has been ruled as an absolute and hereditary emirate by the Al Athani family since the mid 19th century. Sheikh Hamad came to power in a coup in 1995, taking advantage of his father's absence on a trip to Europe. Power transition in Qatar has once again exposed the West's double standard towards democracy. The hereditary succession of Sheikh Tamim is strongly supported by Western countries, especially Qatar's close military ally, the United States. Qatar hosts the largest American military base in the region. The Al Odeid Air Base, located in the west of the capital, Doha, houses U.S. personnel and assets. Many observers believe that. Uh, it's not uh, a domestic uh, decision. Uh, it's uh, behind. Uh, it's uh, behind Qatar, uh, and the Americans uh, are behind this uh, uh, decision. Uh, no one can deny uh, the influence of United States and Qatar. No one can deny uh, the importance of Qatar for the United States. Considering its undemocratic system of power transitions, it is quite ironic that Doha continues to intervene in the internal affairs of regional countries such as Syria. Qatar is showering money and arms on anti-Damascus militants. Western media reports say Qatar and Saudi Arabia are even paying salaries to insurgents fighting against the government of Syrian President Bashar al-Assad. During the so-called Friends of Syria meeting in Doha, Qatari Prime Minister Sheikh Hamad bin Jassim Al Thani said arming the insurgents is the only way to establish peace in Syria. Emir Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani will now have to handle tensions with the ruling family and other powerful clans over his father's alignment with U.S. foreign policies. Analysts, however, believe power transition in Qatar will not change the Arab state's foreign policies on regional and international levels. He's a new emir with British trade. America and the West purely to save their, save their hands here. Uh, and therefore, I don't see any change in Qatar's policy. It would continue as quite aggressive foreign policy in relation to the Arab world, in relation to Iran and elsewhere.